Welcome back to our channel. I'm Bella Luna. I am part of a group of witches known as the Witchy Witchies. We do a podcast and we do this YouTube channel. If you're new to our channel, please stick around, check us out. If you like what you see, give us a like and subscribe and click on the notification button so you can get all of our latest and greatest videos. Ritual or spiritual baths have been performed for eons across multiple cultures and belief systems. Traditionally, these types of baths are spiritual in nature, such as cleansing or purification baths, baths to clear negative energies, or as uncrossing baths. It's also, though, not uncommon to see ritual or spiritual baths used for other purposes, such as for drawing luck, money, or love. The assumption, though, is that if you don't have a bathtub, you can't partake in spiritual bathing. But actually, there are other options you can consider. In this video, we'll take a look at an alternative approach to ritual bathing without the need of a bathtub. In order to do a spiritual bath, you'll need to prepare a large batch of your bath mixture first, so choose a large bucket or other large container. To do this first, you'll need to choose your water. The most optimal is, of course, water from natural sources, such as a river, lake, stream, or rain. In many cases, though, this may not always be readily accessible, so the next best option is to use distilled water. Next, you'll need to decide if you'll be using dried or fresh herbs or flowers. For dried herbs, you'll need your water to be hot, but don't boil that water. Pour the hot water onto the dried herbs and let it steep for about 10 minutes. For fresh herbs, plants, or flowers, lightly tear, rub, and place them in cool water. Let them steep for a while as well. Some herbs or plants to consider for use are poke root, which is good for hex breaking, angelica root, which can remove curses and hexes, agrimony to banish negative energies, bay leaf for protection or purification, cinnamon to raise spiritual vibrations or produce protective vibrations, cloves to drive away hostile and negative forces or to purify, hyssop for purification or protection, eucalyptus also for protection, pine for purification and protection, lemon for purification or cleansing negative vibrations. Regardless of dried or fresh, make sure these are charged and activated. Some use the act of the cooling of the hot water as the method of activation itself. After steeping the herbs, plants, or flowers, strain the mixture so you only have the liquid left. You can then add other waters such as moon or solar water or other prepared holy water, Kenango water, or Florida water. Florida water's core ingredient is generally bergamot and is alcohol-based. It's used in a number of magical and ritual traditions, including hoodoo. It's a common ingredient in spiritual cleansing. Kenanga water's foundation is the Elang Elang flower and is also alcohol-based. The Elang Elang flower is native to Indonesia, Malaysia, and the Philippines, and used in a number of Asian folk magic practices, along with hoodoo and santeria in Kenanga water. It's most often used in purification rituals, ancestor work, and removing negative energy. You can also consider adding other ingredients, such as Epsom salts, which disarm enemies and are a common ingredient in purification baths. Regular or sea salts can be used for protection, cleansing, good luck, and uncrossing. White vinegar can be added, which is another common ingredient in cleansing and purification baths. Or you can consider adding a touch of ammonia. Be cautious though, ammonia is toxic and can be harmful if inhaled. Do not use ammonia unless you are well versed with ways to use it safely. If it's used, ammonia should be only no more than a teaspoon that's diluted in at least four gallons of water due to its toxicity. If you're underage, do not use this without permission and supervision by an adult. Ammonia is considered a very strong spiritual cleanser, and it can remove negative, positive, as well as neutral influences. So I don't recommend using ammonia if you're not familiar with its use in spiritual practices and how to use it appropriately. Since a bathtub in this case isn't an option, think about the location then that you'll want to do this bath. So most will opt to do this in a shower, but if you're able and weather permitting, I strongly encourage you to consider doing this outdoors. And if you're able, doing this in sky clad is even better. Here's a general ritual bath you can use. Just adjust your ingredients to your specific purpose of cleansing or purification and why. Make sure you've washed yourself first with regular water. In other words, take a regular shower to physically cleanse yourself. 
Set the atmosphere. Cleanse your space. Use candles. Burn incense. If you're doing this outdoors, think about having a fire pit going. Begin with pouring your prepared bath water over yourself slowly, starting at the top of your head. Don't pour all of it at once as you'll want to continue using that water. As you pour, speak your will, incantation or psalm, whichever you choose to use or whichever is part of your tradition or culture. You'll want to spend about 15 minutes continually soaking yourself with the spiritual or ritual bath mixture while meditating and visualizing on the intent of the ritual. You can use your hands to continue to splash yourself with the bath mixture, but if you can, think about using fresh whole large leaves instead of your hands. Basically, you'd use the leaves much like you might use a washcloth to wipe across your body. If you choose to use leaves, look to leaves from plants or trees with similar properties as the purpose of your spiritual bath if you can. Also think about the direction you're washing with your hands or fresh leaves. A number of practices and belief systems consider the direction of the stroke to be based on your intention. So in hoodoo, for example, washing with a downward stroke removes negativity, while washing with an upward stroke brings luck or fortune. For any rituals involving release or removal of negative energies or bad luck, visualize that leaving you and visualize it dissipating as the water travels down the drain in the shower or soaks into the earth if you're outdoors. If you use a shower, don't forget to cleanse it in any objects you use with salt water or holy water. As you can see, being without a bathtub shouldn't stop you from being able to take advantage of the benefits of spiritual or ritual bathing. Use these ideas to think about ways you can still incorporate the significance of ritual or spiritual bathing in your practice, and don't let mundane limitations hinder your practice. Let us know in the comments if you use other means to partake of the benefits of spiritual bathing without a tub and how you do it. As always, thank you so much for watching, and until next time, we will see you on the next video.